Got my drink lined up for a little story time because I find records to be so interesting, so intoxicating, it makes perfect sense that I do what I do. I'm Skylar Davis, owner of Culture Shock Clothing and Records here in Rockford, Illinois, and this is Vinyl Happy Hour. Uh, tonight, we're just gonna start off hot and heavy right here with a release I'm super stoked about. I didn't even know this existed. Uh, but the first one we're gonna talk about is this Stooges rare live recording that was lost for 50 years. Uh, this is getting released tomorrow. It's going to be available in our store and it's going to be available at cultureshockshop.com. So we're going to post the link to that too. So you can check it out and you go find it on the website or find it in store. But there are two versions of it. The first one I'm going to talk about is extremely limited. Uh, that's why we do these vinyl happy hours. So we can kind of fill you in and catch you up with some of the details of what's getting released because there are so many great record labels and bands and artists compiling things together to not just give you new releases, but we're finding these kind of holy grails like this. Uh, the quick story on this is, this is the live recording from this Goose Lake Festival that happened 1970 in Michigan, outside Detroit. It was kind of like Michigan's Woodstock. And this is the only known like live recording of the original Stooges lineup, Iggy Pop and the Stooges. If you don't know this, Stooges are one of my favorite bands, especially from the 60s, 70s era, right next to Black Sabbath. Uh, but what's really cool about it is the packaging alone. There's two versions of it. There's the regular version with the print or, you know, printed jacket and stuff like that. It's a uh, two color tone, it looks like, and it's on black vinyl. But Third Man Records, uh, known for Jack White from White Stripes record label, they actually found this real recording. It was in some farmhouse in Michigan from the soundboard of the concert where there was over 200,000 people. And it was rumored to have been lost and that nobody would ever find it. But they released it and they did a thousand copies. This is actually a silkscreen jacket. As you can see, it's much different looking. It's just the flat two-tone color. It's screen printed jacket front and back. And for Indie Store Exclusive, they did this like gray cream vinyl. Uh, and the insert that comes with it is just, for any enthusiast, it's just a great story about the festival, all the bands that were playing, Chicago, Bob Seger, Joe Cocker, and all this stuff. But it's a wild show, man. It's so awesome to hear the raw, stripped-down uh, talent that the Stooges had. And they were way ahead of their time. They're considered to be one of the forefathers of punk bands and things like that. Uh, so I was just stoked to see this release and to hear it, because I've never heard this live recording. I thought it might be kind of a crappy, primitive recording. Plus, you hear with 200,000 people there, there might be a lot of audience noise. Not the case. It's actually not from the audience recording. It's from the original soundboard. Uh, so it sounds awesome. So I'm definitely scoring a copy for myself. We've got some for the store. Just, uh, it's an amazing story to hear about too. There's also inner band stuff too. Like they're the bass player. They, they said that he was so nervous in front of all the people that he didn't even play his bass. Well, it turns out he did play. You can hear that he was playing. It may not have been the best, but even on their studio recordings, the Stooges were like almost like a train off the tracks. Like the way they recorded was just, uh, just a cool visceral sounding uh, thing. So that's really cool. We have five records tonight, plus we're gonna give you a sneak peek on a couple of rare used records that we're gonna be unveiling for Record Store Day coming up August 29th. So the limited re official releases are on our website right now too, if you wanna peek at those to see what's gonna be available. Uh, we're gonna get to those in just a little bit. I'm gonna save those for some of the holy grails. But my five top releases of the week I'm talking about besides the Stooges, all happen to be on color vinyl, which is really cool too. Uh, this one is Heart live on pink vinyl. This is live at uh, Royal Albert Hall. This was a recording from 2016 and they are doing black vinyl versions too. This one happens to be a double LP on pink vinyl and they even numbered it. I don't know if you can see that, but they are numbered. So at the bottom corner, it says, this is number 243 of 1500 that were made. Uh, so it's really cool to see the efforts that go into the packaging and special releases here with some of the records that are coming out. Uh, not just some older bands, well, this week was really weird because there was a bunch of older bands they got reissue on vinyl or first time on vinyl and on color vinyl. There was live stuff from like Moody Blues and Rainbow uh, and then Deep Purple has a new album out and they did them all on color vinyl. Uh, so that's really cool. But besides just reissues and classics from older classic bands, there's some new bands. This indie artist, The Glass Animals release is a really great polished sounding release. This is an indie store exclusive. So they actually did this on kind of a, a really cool candy sky blue. I'm not sure what color you want to call that, but they did a really cool release on that. Uh, indie store exclusive, so that you can't buy it from their website or online or any major stores. 
It's only from independent record stores. Uh, the singer and writer of this band, he, over the years, you know, this is a really great kind of pop album, but it does kind of tear down some barriers between even a little pop, electronic, and hip hop. And he's actually been writing and producing for uh, Joey Badass, Wale, like more hip hop artists and some other indie rock artists. Uh, but cool artwork, of course, like I said. Uh, there's a track on here that they did, um, Tokyo Drifting with Travis Scott. So it's a cool little mix to see an indie rock band mixing with a hip hop artist. Uh, great release from Glass Animals. That one's in store too and available at cultureshockshop.com. This is another album, one of my favorite bands of all time, Pixies. I love these guys. This is the Bossa Nova reissue on red vinyl. It's been 30 years since this came out. I wish I'd have heard the Pixies earlier in life. I listened to them a little bit later, uh, but they're just a great sounding band. And uh, Kim, who was in the band, this was right around the time she had also released some music with the Breeders. So she was on fire doing music with two bands. This is a great album too. I know the first couple of albums seem to get a little more accolades, but this one's a great one too. Uh, it comes with a booklet and some extra goodies too with it. And I said it's on red vinyl just for the anniversary edition. So a lot of times too, to note a lot, when bands put out something that's like a 10 year, 20, 30 year anniversary edition, they're gonna be pretty limited usually. So if you do wanna get it, you should pick it up when it's available. Otherwise you might end up finding it on the aftermarket. So let me sneak in before I get to the one of the last records I wanna talk about, some of the rare albums that I want to show off that we're gonna be putting out on Record Store Day. This is Pink Floyd's very first album, uh, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This is not an original pressing, which would have been in 67, but this is the 1971 pressing, Columbia Records. This is the UK import. So it has a much different label. If you have this album, I can I'm sure you can tell that the artwork is just a little bit different. It's got this skinnier sleeve, which a lot of uh, European countries seem to use those thinner sleeves like that. Uh, but this is a really old pressing, 71, almost 50 years old, super clean shape. This is way before Pink Floyd had been known for, you know, Dark Side of the Moon and the Wall and some of their other big things. So there's probably not a million billion copies of these that were ever produced even. So it's quite rare to see. And this is, of course, with the original lineup with Sid Barrett. Uh, so that's quite a rare uh, record. So besides all these new limited releases that we're going to be putting out uh, for Record Store Day this year, uh, there is going to be some really choice used records that we've hunted down and found too. Uh, let's let's drop one more. I've got, this is the weirdest, one of the weirdest used records I've ever seen before. It's a stiff records compilation from, I think it's uh, 77, but this is all bands from Akron, Ohio area, uh, which of course a lot of people know Devo came from there, but this was in a very industrial town. You've got the Waitresses, the Rubber City Rebels, uh, just a lot of bands like that. Um, Rachel Sweet also came from there. This is the weirdest thing though, it, it tells inside. This is a scratch and sniff cover. So you can actually scratch this rubber tire and it smells like burnt cardboard and rubber. It's the weirdest thing. Akron, Ohio, like a lot of Midwest towns was known for manufacturing and they actually were the headquarters for like BF Goodrich and Goodyear Tires and stuff like that. So a lot of people had jobs there. Uh, it's also funny because one side of the record is like, um, your this side is, uh, like the more manufacturing based one side's a plate too and it shows like all these different foods because they have a lot of restaurants and stuff like that to take care of all the people working in manufacturing so it's kind of funny the other side has a tire on the label so the amount of work that went into that the packaging is just super weird and super interesting and all the bands that were on there were never quite huge you know they're not like new york and la bands but they're kind of just midwest rockish punkish some stuff like that but the artwork and the way they have that scratch and sniff cover is so bizarre. It's just such a cool, weird record. So that's kind of one of the many weird, rare things you might find in an independent record store like ours, especially on Record Store Day. Um, I do want to show off the Shags, and then I'm going to show off one of my personal records on my personal collection that I thought was just a great rarity. But this is a reissue of a 1982 album from a really strange girl group from the East Coast called the Shags. They were not meant to be in a band. They were not musicians, really. Their father wanted to have a rock and roll band in the family, and he built a studio and had all four of his daughters practice and play their instruments and sing, and it was just, uh, it's known as one of the worst recordings ever. But it has this cute charm to it, something really interesting and strange about it. And you've got so many artists like 
uh, Frank Zappa and Kurt Cobain and uh, NRBQ, they love it and they think it's so interesting. And I actually can see its influences that kind of off kilter off time on bands like the Pixies even. Um, but since it is considered one of the worst bands or worst recordings ever made, uh, the stuff they did, I have to have a shot of Malort, which is also known as one of the worst liquors ever. So I always drink Malort whenever I listen to the Shags. I just have to, it's just so bad. Mm. Oh, but I'm so happy to get this album. I actually didn't even know they had a second album. Their first one came out in 69. Let's get a look at them first. This one came out in 82. And if they were playing for that many years, I'm shocked that they didn't get much better. But this one is a little bit better. And there's a lot of great info from Light in the Attic Records who got this put together. Sorry, I'm lording over here. Um, <laughs> so this is a limited indie store exclusive reissue of their 82 album, which is called Shag's Own Thing. And it's on... Uh, Red and Ural, red and yellow, galaxy swirl vinyl. Oh, sorry. Swirling my words there on the swirly vinyl. Uh, but anyway, it's just so funny to hear this album. This one is a little bit more melodic than their first album. Uh, but their first album, they have My Pal Foot Foot and some other weird stuff. They revisit a couple of their songs. Let's just tell you a couple of track names. Gimme That, Gimme That Ding, uh, <laughs> My Pal Foot Foot, Redone. Shag's own thing. There's a bonus track, Love at First Sight. Uh, it's just a great, another great time capsule of a band that was just so obscure, so interesting on a small private label. If some of the bands hadn't found those original pressings, which are worth hundreds of dollars, and gotten a record label to reissue them, we might not have heard of them. They would have remained underground. Uh, this stuff, now it's even streaming, I think, stuff like that. It's so cool to see the record labels and bands that uh, bring some of this stuff out of obscurity. Uh, so I just had to show that one off. So that was kind of my like holy grail releases for the week. Uh, definitely worth checking out. We can get these uh, at cultureshockshop.com or if you're local, please come into the store and pick it up too. Uh, I'll just co close off with one of my personal recent favorite records that I found, another obscure one. This is Van Duren and it's called Are You Serious? This is also uh, more of a Midwestern kind of one. This is a Memphis guy who put this album out on a private label. It's considered a great power pop, you know, obscure classic and he actually went to school with one of the guys from big star um but it's quite rare quite valuable i mean it's a, a good hundred dollar record usually especially in this condition uh but this is my personal collection and i just happened to be posting and i was listening to it on instagram the other day and someone followed me and uh i saw that there was a van Duren documentary that just got made last year and they're showing it how weird i didn't even know that until they found me you know if you look up van Duren. Uh, I forgot the name of the film offhand. I don't know if it's called Are You Serious, but I can't wait to see it. It's only up for screening at a couple of places. It was pre-COVID anyway. So I'd love to see it get an official release. Uh, if you're not familiar with power pop music, you probably are. You just don't know. I consider a lot of bands going from Beach Boys to Weezer to be like power pop almost in a more mainstream way. Uh, of course, Big Star and Cheap Trick were the, the big well-known artists of that kind of sound. It's more of a good polished, smooth sound. Uh, this is just a great album. It's not streaming. It's super obscure. I don't know. It got released on CD once in Japan. Uh, it's just cool to get out and find. It's on a label I've never heard of, Big Sound Records, 1977. This is a Memphis artist. Uh, it's just a cool, rare find and one of my personal collection pieces that I probably wouldn't want to let go of. But, uh, thank you so much for checking out Final Happy Hour. We put together a new video and show off like five special new releases every single week. And we like to have a drink while doing so. So please join us and check out our pages. Leave us some comments and uh, keep checking out our videos too. Cheers.